Greetings fellow explorers, this is Tony with Fount Systems Network, and we're here in pursuit of low carbon innovations for seawater desalination. Today we're going to look at a key document, the World Bank's report on renewable energy desalination. Super relevant to our pursuit, and we're going to dig into this and see uh, what policy recommendations they're providing for the Middle East and North Africa. In addition to the report, we're going to look at some of the most advanced technologies in solar thermal energy gathering on planet Earth, and we're going to really dial in finally at the end into some proprietary information that I've extracted from the report uh, that can help us conceptualize uh, not only um, carbon dioxide emissions, but also dollars and cents around a business plan. So if you're new to Fount Systems, uh, please follow this link. This is for our work plan so you can see where we are in the process. If you like what you see here, like and subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. The report addresses ways to solve long-term water stress in the Middle East North Africa region. You might remember that our very first background episode was on global water stress. So the report recognizes that seawater desalination is going to be an inevitable part of relieving global water stress, but then importantly, it looks at solutions to reducing the environmental impacts that would result from using it. There are five main components to the report. First, there's an analysis of the water gap that's anticipated through 2050 in the MENA region. Then there's a strategic prioritization of the solutions to address that water gap. There's a recognition that seawater desalination is going to be an inevitable part of solving that water gap. Then they identify concentrated solar power as a renewable energy input into desalination. And then there's lots of data and metrics around economic costs and some metrics around pollution as well. So the water gap is a projected uh, assumption or analysis of the amount of new water that would be needed to fill people's needs above and beyond that which can be provided from renewable natural resources. And so we'll look at a uh, graph right here from the report. So let's take a look on the left. We've got desalination providing more than 40% of new water resources by 2050. And then the remaining three items, reducing water use in agriculture, building new reservoirs, and recycling urban industrial wastewater. These three all comprise a very robust uh, response that would be done prior to building desalination plants. And we can see that improvements in agriculture are significantly important, but also significant investments in urban wastewater reclamation. Their calculation is that just desalination alone would need to provide 93 cubic kilometers of new water resources every year. Yes, they say desalination is essential and that it will continue to play a critical role in the Middle East and North Africa's future water supply portfolio. Yes, again, uh, we looked at a prior episode, the impact of carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere, but notably in the report in the index, there are a couple interesting maps that show the type and the quantities of chemical pollutants that are emitted into the Persian Gulf. Um, these are in the Gulf states, and I thought these maps were very interesting. So here we have a map showing anti-scalant discharges for multi-stage flash and reverse osmosis. Um, notably, you'll see that multi-stage flash, because of the way the technology works, relies more on anti-scalants, which prevent the buildup of minerals from the evaporation of the salt water from the ocean. And we can see the locations and the relative magnitudes of those discharges. It looks like 58 metric tons are emitted into the Persian Gulf every day of anti-scalants. Uh, they look at chlorine discharges, and it looks like those are associated only with multi-stage flash. And they look at copper discharges, again, associated with multi-stage flash. Uh, the other thing I would point out is mangroves and coral reefs, which are 
uh, environmentally sensitive habitats. They're also shown in, in some patches around uh, on the map as well. So we can see where the chemical pollutants might impact environmentally sensitive areas in the Persian Gulf. So now you're getting to the central question that the report is trying to address. Once we minimize the amount of seawater desalination facilities that need to be built, then how do we address ways to reduce the environmental impacts that are going to result from their use? I wouldn't go as far as to say that the report is recommending this but there's a real focus on concentrating solar power to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions associated with seawater desalination. Great question. Concentrating solar power is a very exciting technology. I think it's best if I just show you a few photos here. Um, we will start with the website of a Tortosol Energy, and we will look at a central receiver with heliostats as the first type what we're looking at here is an array of mirrors, each of them that redirect sunshine toward the central receiving tower. And that central receiving tower receives that heat energy and then becomes a part of a process of directing that heat energy toward another industrial application. In this case, it's probably electricity. And we will take another look at the view of that uh, central receiving tower. I don't know if this photo is retouched, but we can see that that central receiving tower gets very, very hot. Another configuration is what's called a parabolic trough, and that's a bit like a long linear radar dish. The radar dish is motorized and it tracks to some degree the position of the sun in the sky, redirects that, that solar heat energy toward a central receiving point and then refrigerant flows through that, what is a pipe, to direct that heat energy toward other processes. A lot of times I think they use molten salt for very high temperature applications as that refrigerant. And then uh, third configuration here, we have a linear Fresnel. You've heard this before now. We've got mirrors that redirect the solar heat energy toward a central point, and then that is also used for other industrial processes. So, you might be wondering how this gets attached to a desalination plant. And so there's a diagram in the World Bank report that shows each of the different kinds of concentrating uh, solar power, parabolic trough, linear Fresnel, central receiver, and then how that heat energy gets directed toward uh, steam turbine, gas turbine, or combined cycle, which are all ways of uh, generating electricity. Notably here, the parabolic trough is only applied to a steam turbine. So my guess is that's a lower heat application, whereas the central receiver we saw in the photo gets really, really hot. So that's able to drive a gas turbine and a combined cycle process. Now those are used to drive reverse osmosis or multi-effect distillation. Um, reverse osmosis is powered by electricity. Multi-effect distillation, I believe, is powered both by thermal energy and electricity. So uh, I would imagine, and I need to learn more about this, that's part of what our pursuit here at Found System is, um, how MED works, but uh, I believe you're able to use that some of that thermal heat energy directly in the multi-effect distillation process. So you're, you're inputting these renewable energy sources from solar energy to drive the process of seawater desalination, thereby reducing reliance on fossil fuel energy to drive those processes, thereby reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Good question. Based on my limited research, I have found a energy park in the UAE currently under construction called Noor Energy One. And Noor Energy One uses a, a combination of photovoltaic, parabolic trough, and uh, a central receiving tower. And it looks like it's under construction right now. So here are a few different photos of the project under construction. We can see the parabolic trough components there. Uh, there's going to be the central receiving tower, and then we'll look at a couple construction photos here as well. The uh, 
I don't know when the project is due for completion. And I should note, uh, just to be clear in its relationship to the report, that this appears to be an energy park that is going to be used to generate electricity to connect to the grid. This park does not comprise technologies that are attached directly to any seawater desalination facility. If there are other um, facilities or improvements going on in other parts of the world, I'm not currently aware of them, but in the course of our pursuit, if I find something that uh, is being built that was in response to the World Bank report, I'll come back and do another episode. Yes, in fact, there are some very interesting and useful metrics in the report. During the course of our pursuit, we are going to be encountering more metrics, and I'm sure we're going to uh, be shown a range of data in this regard. So from the World Bank report, we could call this uh, metrics batch A, and I will look at a summary here of the, uh, of the data that I thought was most interesting. Um, so cost of desalinated Gulf water. So this would be the Persian Gulf, dollars per cubic meter, across these various technologies. Uh, notice the multi-stage flash, which relies heavily on fossil fuels, 84 cents, unsubsidized, uh, uh, subsidized rather, uh, and then a buck 60 unsubsidized um, cost per cubic meter, which is a thousand liters, about 265 gallons. And so um, we see also seawater reverse osmosis being the most expensive. So uh, capital investments are substantial. I didn't quite know how to interpret their data as dollars per cubic meter per day on the assumption that it's 100,000 cubic meters a day. Um, but using uh, kind of common sense, I, I came up with about $100 million, $180 million outlay uh, financed over 20 years for a multi-effect distillation. Notably, seawater reverse osmosis, they provided a budget there that includes the cost of the power plant to, to drive that facility at about 1.2 billion. So we can see generally, even if these numbers are very broad, that adding the power component, the necessary power component to the seawater desalination facility substantially increases the overall cost of the system. Uh, we have data on operational expenses, and then they've done some calculations to include the cost of uh, upfront cost of renewables per again dollars per cubic meter. So we see that concentrating solar power, when combined with MED, if MED without the renewables is a dollar twenty-seven a cubic meter, we're up to two point two per cubic meter. So the cost of renewables with the concentrated solar power adds about a dollar um, to that cubic meter. Notably. Photovoltaic is very expensive upfront cost when combined with RO, and then wind is just a little bit more. So you can see why when we're looking at incorporating renewable energy in, their, in the World Bank report, concentrating solar power gets the focus because it looks like the most cost-effective way to incorporate renewables into the process. I'll finally note that they're looking at water yield for concentrating solar power plants on a unit area basis. I almost think this information is wrong. It just seems like not a lot of water, but they're suggesting in, in, a, in a kind of minor passage that the concentrating solar power can yield a cubic kilometer per 100 square kilometers per year. And that is something we will want to look more into in our found systems pursuit. So there you have it, the Fount Systems Review of the World Bank Report on Renewable Energy Desalination. I learned a lot from it, but I do have questions still. For example, how was the report received when it was issued in 2012? Were its recommendations incorporated into policy and planning documents for the various countries in the MENA region? And will it be, re will it be revisited as the situation develops over time? I hope it was educational for you too. Thank you for your time and for paying attention. If you like what you see here on the Found Systems Network, don't forget, please like and subscribe. And everyone, remember, keep exploring, keep growing. I'll see you next time.